Hey everybody, this is example number one for structural analysis of deflections for beams using the virtual work method. The problem statement that we have is we're asked to find the displacement at joint B for the cantilever steel beam using the virtual work method. And the moment of inertia I is equal to 500 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth power. And the Young's modulus E is equal to 200 gigapascals. So here's our cantilever beam, and we have a distributed uh, uniform loading equal to 10 kilonewtons per meter, and we call that W. And the total length is 10 meters, and we call that, uh, we call that L. And we need to find the displacement at joint B, at the free end. And before we proceed to the solution, I just want to let you guys know that this example is brought to you by Bentley. And Bentley Systems is a software development company that supports the professional needs of engineers, designers, planners, and contractors responsible for creating and managing infrastructure. And Bentley has tailored software applications for design, modeling, and analysis of buildings, structures, bridges, plants, and more. And I have used Bentley software, and I can say that the software was very easy to use, and the support that came with it was impeccable. Whenever I needed help, the Bentley team was there for me. And here's their website. It's Bentley.com. There's a link to Bentley.com and some of their YouTube channels within the description part of this video. So if you're a student and want to get familiar with the software and get a leg up over your colleagues during your job search, academic licensing is available through Bentley. And if you're a practicing engineer and you want to sharpen up your skills, they have a bunch of videos and webinars on their website as, as well as their various YouTube channels. So please check them out. And now going back to our cantilever steel beam problem. The first thing we need to do is establish a coordinate system. So we have to establish a coordinate system that is valid within regions of the beam where there is no discontinuity of real or virtual loads. So in our case, there's no discontinuous loading. So that means we just need one coordinate system. And the coordinate system we're going to choose is going to be uh, in this direction. It's going to be going from joint B, from this free end, and it's going to the left. And the reason I've chosen to use this approach is this, is because if we because of this coordinate system, we won't have to calculate the reactions at the cantilever support. We don't have to calculate the vertical reaction and the bending moment at, at the fixed support. So this is why I've chosen this coordinate system instead of a coordinate system going from left to right. So the next step is we need to get the real moment function. So we have to determine the internal bending moment function using the same coordinate system that, we ju that we've just established. And this should also be the same coordinate system as a virtual loading that we're going to do in the next step. So here's our cantilever beam. And we take a sectional cut at location C. It's just an arbitrary location. So at that, at that cut location, we have an internal bending moment and shear. And here's a, in this piece, we have so we have the distributed loading W, and it's acting over a distance X. And remember, X, the coordinate system, is going in this direction. And we have an internal bending moment, an internal shear. So we simplify this even further by taking the resultant of the uniform loading on that segment of the beam. And that resultant is equal to W times X. And it's acting at a distance of X over 2 from our cut location, location C. So now we're going to take moment about location C to get the internal bending moment function. So it's going to be equal to negative m and clockwise is negative and counterclockwise is positive. So it's going to be negative m minus w times x which is a resultant times x over 2 which is the moment arm. So our internal bending moment function is equal to negative w times x squared over 2. The next step after this will be 
we're going to apply a virtual load and get a virtual moment function. So we're going to place a unit load on the beam at the point and in the direction of the desired displacement. So we need the displacement at B, so that's where we're going to apply a virtual unit load equal to 1 kilonewton. And with the virtual load in place and all the real loads removed from the beam, now we're going to calculate the internal moment as a function of the coordinate system that we've chosen. Okay? So here's our cantilever beam. We've taken out the real loads and we've applied a virtual unit load at location B, which is where we want our displacement, where we want to calculate our displacement. So we take a sectional cut at an arbitrary location, location C, we just call it again. So here's what we have. We have an internal bending, a virtual in, we have an internal virtual bending moment and shear as well. And we have this unit load. And we should assume that this virtual moment also acts in a conventional positive direction. So it's acting like this. Okay? And now we're going to take a moment about location C. So we have uh, again, clockwise is negative and counterclockwise is positive. So we have negative M1, which is our virtual internal bending moment, minus our unit load 1 times a moment arm of x. So our virtual internal moment function is equal to negative x. And now we can apply the virtual work principle and solve for the displacement at joint B. So here's the equation for the virtual work. It's equal to 1 times delta is equal to the integration from 0 to L. And then the integral is for small m times capital M divided by EI dx. So 1 here is the unit load, the virtual unit load that we applied. Delta here is the displacement that we're trying to find. This lowercase m is a virtual moment function. This capital M is the real moment function. And then EI is just the Young's modulus times the moment of inertia. So here's what we have. Just simplifying it more, making things more clear. 1 kilonewton times delta B equals to this integration. And then since EI is constant for the entire beam, we just move it outside of the integral. So we're just left with uh, the moment function of the virtual moment function times the real moment function. And we're, we're just going to take the integration of that from 0 to L. And so we have negative x times negative wx squared over 2. And that's equal to wx cubed over 2. And then we integrate that and we get 1 over EI times WX to the fourth power divided by 8. And the limits of integration are from 0 to L. So we just plug in the numbers and we get that it comes out to be W L to the fourth power divided by 8 EI. So here is our virtual work equation again. 1 kilonewton times delta B equals W L to the fourth divided by 8 EI. And now we can plug in the actual values for W, the uniform loading, and L, the length of the beam, and then also the Young's modulus and the moment of inertia. And we get delta B is equal to 0.125 meters or 125 millimeters. And this is the end of this example. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out the Facebook page and like it. It's facebook.com slash engineering examples. And please also visit our website. It's engineeringexamples.net. Thanks.